Hey, everyone. I'm George Savarikas. And I'm Harold Varner. And we're the co-host of Ripping It. Before we start this week's episode, we want to give a shout out to a couple of our very special sponsors. Harold, this is the ultimate backyard game, especially if you're a golfer. Chippo, I've played it with buddies. It is the perfect game when you're outside just enjoying the summer. Yeah, it's going to be fun for obviously my kids soon and obviously for adult beverages. (laughs) <laughs> nothing better than to have a few of those on the line as you're making some bets with buddies. If you want to get your own Chippo, we have the special promo code ripping it for 15% off. Go to chippogolf.com. Harold, I know I personally suck at putting and couldn't be more excited to put the perfect practice to use. I know there are a number of guys on tour have used it. Yeah, it's a pretty cool thing. Obviously I think everyone has it in their house. It's a, it's a really cool thing to just get people you know, obviously, I love gambling on it. Um, there's no gambling at Bushwood, but it's a great, fun feature of the household. The perfect practice is a need if you're just starting at golf, recreational guy like myself, even for pros on the PGA Tour. We have a special promo code to get you 15% off. It's ripping it. Go to perfectpractice.golf to get yours today. We're past the halfway point here on Ripping It, episode number seven. George Savarikas riding shotgun alongside Harold Varner. H, big week for you, man. Uh, you had the week off leading into the Wells Fargo Championship. I remember you saying, what was it, like a month or two ago, you are trying to get your game ready for Charlotte. So what did you do the last week to get ready for Quell? <clears throat> um, just obviously spent a lot of time um, playing at Quail, uh, fortunate enough to be a member there. Um, just a good spot to hang, but yeah, just same thing I would do for any tournament, but just happens to be right at home. So looking forward to it. So when you're just playing at Quail and hanging, like, what are you practicing shots that you think you may hit during the tournament or what, what actually goes into that? Uh, a little bit of both, just obviously playing a lot of golf. I like playing more than practicing, but, uh, you know, just super, you know, just super excited to be at home. You know, it's easy sleeping in your own bed, but, you know, you just want to play so well. So just got to let go a little bit and just have fun, which I shouldn't have any trouble with. And then you, what, snuck down to my city without telling me for a day while I'm out of town? Oh, I mean, what gives, man? Yeah, I snuck down there for a day. It was pretty cool. Went, went down there for a friend's uh, bachelor party. He was there for the whole weekend. But, uh, yeah, snuck down there for uh, the day. It was, uh, it was a good time, obviously. I had never was- been to Miami. That, I, that was your first Miami trip, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was it was good. And I wasn't there very long, but long enough. It's probably better for you, considering how big a week this is, that I wasn't there. So Without a doubt. Probably still be <laughs> stuck there. <laughs> uh, watching last week, uh, Val Spark had him a weird spot on the schedule. Just real quick, seeing Sam Burns win. Uh, I think he's like the fourth first-time winner this season on the PGA Tour. When you see guys get over the hurdle to get there first, what goes through your mind? Uh, Nothing really. I don't really think about it. I didn't watch much golf, Um, but obviously knowing Sam, I'm just super happy for him. Um, Great, great guy. I've enjoyed every encounter I've had with him, but yeah, that's, uh, you know, that's what I'm looking forward to doing. Um, But yeah, I guess it was pretty cool. I'm sure it was pretty special. Where would you put this tournament in your rankings as far as importance when you're looking at your schedule at the beginning of the year? Uh, It'd be pretty high if there'd be a top one or two. I mean, it's just so important to not me. And I think it's really cool when things aren't about you. I think we have a great opportunity to uh, not so much give people hope, but there's a lot of people, um, I believe, I've always said this, that I think it takes a village to raise a kid and I'm still a kid and this happens to be my village and I'm just super you know, excited to uh, to be playing well first, but playing well at a good time, that matters a lot to me. Well, I'm looking forward to digging a little deeper on your week at Wells Fargo. Uh, I worked this event, I want to say three years ago, um, and of the PGA Tour stops that are recurring, uh, non-major, say WGC, I'd probably put it in my top three. Uh, Quail's phenomenal, how they run it is upper echelon so not only is it a great event that normally has a great field but obviously for you it carries such huge significance that uh you have a lot of going a lot going on on and off the course to lead into wells fargo uh looking forward to hearing 
your memories of first going there like as a kid and then what this week's going to be like before we do that though uh we have a special guest coming on the show who's i i think i'm the bachelor out of us two since you're yeah, married no with kid on the way so i'm still trying to fight the good fight but we have the reigning bachelor matt james joining us you've been telling me for years how big a bachelor fan you are how do you get into reality tv like that i just i it's just not my jam i mean i i'm not saying it's my jam but i'm I'm into well, you tweet about it like it's your jam, so you had me fooled for the last. It's four years. my. It's it's just something that's uh, pretty entertaining because you just can't. Not many people can relate to it, but I like the craziness of it. Um, some of it you can't believe, and some of it you just don't know what's going on. So you just kind of tune in when you can. You hear these crazy, you know, people come on in and share their lives on national television. So it's pretty. It's hilarious. I mean, I don't know. I think it's funny. I'm just glad it's not me. If you ever had the opportunity, say like parallel universe, and you could be on The Bachelor, would you have done it six, seven years ago? No, no chance. Zero chance? No. No. It's okay watching someone else just go right in the pit hole. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then how did you get to know uh, Matt a little? Crazy story. He just hit me up on Instagram and... uh I didn't know, I didn't know who he was. He just, Hey man, pull him for you. No big deal. So like a year later, I see this guy come on there. I'm like, man, that guy messaged me, you know? So just super thoughtful human, you know, just to keep up with North Carolina sports in general. And um, yeah, pretty crazy. Yeah. Played college football at Wake. Uh, it's gotten into golf now. Kind of a, a controversial season on some levels, not necessarily for what Matt did, but what, People on the show did Chris Harrison, the host, uh, who I've interviewed before working at Golf Channel, uh, ended up leaving. So pretty atypical bachelor from what we had seen in years past. We'll discuss that with Matt. Uh, just curious, how much of this season did you watch? I didn't watch much at all. Just kind of knowing Matt, I just I feel it's just hard to watch. I mean, it'd be like you going on there, like it'd be it's cool, but it wouldn't if be. If I like was on there, it'd be nonstop content yeah. my friend yeah i just couldn't i just couldn't do it so not much at all but obviously every week you heard the just the issues outside of the show which were very interesting um obviously for what's going on right now so i just obviously i have my opinions and just is what it is you are not one to bite your tongue uh this this was a a an interview that had my attention the entire time and the conversation took a lot of twists and turns uh, Matt James, Bachelor Season 25, joining us next on Ripping It. You want to wake up feeling good every day? I mean, who doesn't? This product, I can personally attest, has had a huge shift in my day-to-day -day wellness. It's 2020 Immunity Booster, two-and-a-half-ounce shot, handcrafted by sports dietitians, filled with essential vitamins and nutrients with none of the artificial colors or BS you see in sports drinks. I have it before I go to the range or start my round or even just to kick off my day. Get 20% off your first order. Ripping it 20, the promo code. Go to drink2020.com. Harold, we're used to having one bachelor on Ripping It, but now we have the bachelor and Matt <laughs> James joining us. Matt, uh, thanks for hopping on. We ask every guest, so just curious, when's the last time you touched a golf club? Uh, last time I touched, touched a golf club was um, a week ago uh, when I was down in Florida. I went to a, a simulator, and um, I think I might have broke something, but I'm working on my game constantly. Nice, nice. According to your Instagram, you've been working on all kinds of sports. I I mean, we got it. It's a golf podcast, but I grew up skateboarding, so like when I saw you skateboarding, I was like, bro. Dude, it's, it's one of the things, Harold, it's one of the things that like, with everything that's been going on in my life in the past few months, it's one thing that just takes my mind away from everything. And I think that's golf and running for some people. But for me, like just getting on a skateboard is therapeutic. And I just it just helps me to just stay stay at ease and, and not think about everything else that's weighing on me at the time, you know. Um, do you uh where do you usually play? Like we were talking earlier before we got on, like, you know, you're living the nomad life. It's kind of hard to live the nomad life and play golf. Like it's hard enough to take my golf club to another turn. So that's the that's the tricky part. So I I just got fitted for clubs when I was on the Bachelor. Um, 
Uh, it was out in Nemecolon, and I don't know if y'all played there before, but they had a tournament uh, some odd years back, uh, the 84 Lumber Classic, and um, they have two beautiful golf courses there. And um, it, I figured, you know, why not? What, what better time to learn how to play golf than, uh, than, than now? And uh, I never took lessons growing up. I just wasn't patient. Um, I needed to be moving around. I needed uh, – I, I don't know. I was, me and my brother were bouncing off the wall, so – uh, it was, I felt like it was something I missed out on as I got older, not having, um, not being able to play. Cause when all my buddies would go out and play, I'm caddying because I'm slowing up the group, you know? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. uh, so now I can hit the ball. Like I've, I've, I've got a swing coach. I've, uh, but to answer your question, uh, yeah, being nomadic stuff because I, I got fitted for a set of clubs. I, I have like an inch and a half added to the club now and people don't have long clubs. You know, it's, it's very rare. I'm golfing with someone else who's six, five, six, six. So. Um, I make excuses for, for my bad play uh, because the golf clubs I'm renting aren't, aren't my size. Hey, you went to Wake Forest. That's just being wise. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, – Matt, your season was the first time they had done – like filmed The Bachelor at a golf resort, which is kind of wild. George, it was, it was a blessing in disguise because you've got so many things that are going on all throughout the course of filming. And it's very rare that you get a break. And um, like I said, one of the things that I do when I need just to, to get away from everything is skateboard. And I had a half pipe at my house, but my house was also on the 12th hole of the golf, of the golf course. So uh, one day a week uh, when we had like a, a low key morning, I'd get to go out on the golf course and I play uh, as many balls as I had. You know, I would go through a couple cases. So um, once I ran out of golf balls, I, uh, I'd call it. Uh, but towards the end of filming, I made it through 18. Like uh, the first time I went out on the course, you can call you can call the the head pro at Nimical, and I lost 36 balls in three holes. <laughs> the, the, the 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 greens are tough. I, I you know what I mean. I I, I listen. You, you have to you have to understand that to 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 move past the problem, you have to first recognize the problem. And um and I needed help. And I found it in the golf coach out there. Their, their pro was incredible. And he got me uh, down to a case by the end of it. So I wasn't going through but 12 balls and 18. So that's progress. You love it, don't you? You're hooked. Like, you're the one that, like, going to be out there all day putting it out and stuff. Harold, all it takes is one shot, right? Like, you just, like, I'm just, like, making divots. And I'm, I'm beating up my clubs. I'm breaking off golf club heads. Like, uh, I didn't – and I didn't, I'm not knowing that these things aren't normal. Like, I didn't know that people didn't go through – 18 balls and, and nine holes, you know what I mean? But I'm learning these things. Right. And that's, and that's all you could do is you just continue to learn. Um, but, but I'm chasing those, those, those nice connections. You know what I mean? Like I'll, I'll get the perfect motion so through good. and I'll send my ball straight, like 250 yards. And I'm like, you know what? Like, I, I think, I think I got this. And then the next hole just humbles me. So <laughs> that will never change. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I hate, I mean, I don't want to scare anyone from playing golf, but I don't care who you are. Um, it's just a, it's a humbling game. You know, life is humbling, but it, one sport I know that will, you can think you're on top of it. As soon as you're on top of it, you're like looking up like, why, what just happened? And you know, what's funny. I'll like, I'll try to use, like, I'll, I'll get a few good, uh, good hits with my, um, my seven iron. So I'll just use it all the time. Like, like I might drive with it. And like I'll tin just, cup. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, if I'm like, why would I use my driver and hit it in the woods if I know that I could just, in five, I'll be on the on the green or I'll be, you know what I mean? So um, I find myself doing that a lot. And and that, and that me and my, my, me and my hybrid have a love-hate relationship. Because when I hit nice with that hybrid, like, there's nothing like you going off the, the tee and you're in the fairway and you pull out that hybrid. Like, I couldn't pull out my Ooh. hybrid because I didn't know how to use it. And so I'm, I'm just literally using my seven. I'm, I'm, I, I'll get close to the tee and I'll use my seven. You know how some people use a seven to like get, get up, um, get up onto the, the green. That's what uh, I'm, I'm telling you. The seven is my most used club. There's some I have. I have a like I said. I had a whole new set of clubs. There's still plastic wrapped around some of my clubs because I don't know how to use them yet. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm in that process of trying to learn how to use everything. Like I'll go. You're in the exploratory process. Yeah, I'm trying to learn how to use it and like if if. If I'm playing buddies and we've got like a dollar or something on a hole, like I'm not gonna be like, you know what, this is a good time to use my 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 hybrid. Like, no, I'm going with that seven. I'm gonna drive with the seven. I might putt with the seven, 
whatever I could do to get as close to par in that hole as possible. Whatever it takes, legitimately. Like you, I mean, you are just fresh out of the cage. You're, 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 you're just going down the wrong path. But yeah, <laughs> you're in for it. You know, obviously, it's a, it's a fun journey. It's you know, any any sport that you can do, compete, you know the deal. It's just something you just you just ride it, you enjoy it, and it's nice that with golf you can do it for a long time. Yeah, and this is my thing, Harold. Like, I'm not gonna try to teach myself how to play on the like as I'm playing 18 because I'm just gonna get frustrated. Like whatever's yeah. working, I'm just gonna rock with it. And then after the fact I'm gonna be like, yo, I need a lesson or like I need help on this or that. Cause like when people try to teach That's me smart. Yeah, people try to teach me like you gotta swing like this and they completely change my like my swing motion. I'm like, how is this gonna work? Like I'm just gonna get I'm gonna get worked out here. Like I need yeah. I need my happy Gilmore release. And then after the round's over, like I'll work on everything else. So that's good. You won't be holding anyone at the, at the I mean, at the golf course. I mean, some guys go out there and they try to do what you just said you're not going to do. And that's how four hour rounds turn into six. And you're like, <laughs> I'll never play golf again. Exactly. Uh, that's awesome. Well, Harold, that's, that's the saying play good, play fast, play bad, play faster. Oh, yeah. That's, that's what yeah, it's all about. Fair. It's just, it's just so hard to, when you're playing bad, like, I mean, you play bad and they come and they put you on the clock. You're like, I mean, dude, I, I literally can't hit. I just hit too many shots. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, what are we doing here? Yeah. George, I'm, I'm hyper conscious of that. That's what I'm saying. Like before I, I knew how to play as, as little as I do now, I would just go out and caddy. Cause it's not fun for anybody. If I'm, if it takes yeah, 10 you're shots. Holding everyone up. Yeah. yeah. So for sure. It's a work in progress. Matt. Can I tell you one of Harold's secrets? Is that okay, Harold? Got a lot of them. Go Let's ahead, spill it. the beans. <laughs> Harold is as emotionally invested in The Bachelor as any human I've come across. <laughs> yeah, I in you know obviously we like we chatted before and then here's I mean here's a good story. So like you, know, you hit me up <laughs> one just, time and I was like I was like oh, I appreciate it blah blah and you know I didn't think anything of it and I was sitting there eating dinner one night. And Amanda's like, oh, you know, I like look up and I'm like, man, I talked to that guy. And Amanda goes, you know, he's the next bachelor. I'm like, what? <laughs> what? So I, I didn't, I didn't invest in this one just because, like, you know, it's, it's like awkward. It's like, man, I hope he, you know, my boy doesn't, you know, he doesn't mess this up. You know, yeah, like, exactly. So I just, yeah, good luck with that. When we were texting during the show, I just like, I, I couldn't do it. So I, you know, obviously, you wake up and you like. Or you're like sitting there, like whether I'm playing video games, I look at my phone, I'm like, I just cut, I just stop, I quit reading. I, I couldn't do it. <laughs> yeah, that's actually true. I reached out to Harold before like any of the Bachelor stuff was was announced because I was just a fan of him. And uh, just uh, anytime you can connect with the North Carolina guy, I try to take that opportunity. Um, and then yeah, like um, it, it's just wild how all that stuff worked out. You know, I was supposed to to be on the Bachelorette, obviously, and it was uh postponed due to quarantine and, and COVID and what, what everything that was going on in, in um, California, which is actually crazy. Like literally that week flew in and um, like you're in your hotel room, like just waiting to, to, for the process to start. And I'm watching the news cause you don't have your phone. I'm just watching the news. It's like, um, yeah, the Ivy league said they're not playing in the NCAA tournament. I'm like, okay, that's kind of weird. That was the beginning. That was the tip of the – that was you're like, all right, whatever. And then it uh, – They just canceled everything. I'm like, wait, like – We're going to film like, this while this – Yeah, where do we stand? And then, like, literally next day. And so was down in Jupiter. So, George, to answer your question, where do I play? I was living in Jupiter with my roommate, uh, Tyler Cameron, who was on The Bachelorette uh, uh, previously. And um, and Jupiter – I mean, you all – I don't have to tell you all. That's, the like, the, one of the biggest golf communities in the country. So um, I had a, a really good friend of mine, uh, James Dixon. Uh, I went to school with his daughter, Grace, who dates one of my really good friends. They live in the Bears Club. So I was fortunate enough to play the Bears Club a few times when I was down in Jupiter with them. Um, and then we'd go down to Palm Beach and play the Breakers. Like, we were bouncing all over the place. And um, it, was, it was a blessing in disguise being in Florida and having the uh, access to these outdoor venues to just, like, find mental sanctuary you know what i mean yeah, because there everyone else places for it yeah dude it was it was again and it was it was a time to um little did i know that i was going to be picking up the game but 
um, everything that Tyler was teaching me was wrong. Like he, he's a lefty. So he's like trying to coach me up on how to play. And I'm like, right, right, right. And I can't make the applications. And it was at this, uh, <laughs> it was this, there's a, there's a, a course in Jupiter called the sand dunes. It's a par three. Um, and, and he would take me there like once a week trying to teach me how to play. And I just was getting super frustrated because he's hitting all these shots and I can't do much, but, um, but yeah. That is nuts. I just can't believe you're like this. You're that hooked and like, you know, I mean, lose. If I lost thirty, I can. I actually, I lost two balls in two days. So I was about to say I can't remember the last time I lost the ball, but you did it on national <laughs> television. Dude, I wish, bro. <laughs> I wish. It's uh, it'll happen again. So don't worry about it. Yeah, my problem is just keeping everything here. You know what I mean? Because like, like I'll, I'll try to 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 shift my club head. I'm like, all right. The, the ball is going to be going this way. Oh, uh, the, the, the course is going this way. So I need to, to shift my club head. And so I'm trying to whack it. Like, I don't know. I'm, tr- I'm trying to, I'm, I'm making up my own theories and, and, and how I think the ball travels. Oh, uh, you gotta, you gotta, yeah, you gotta let go. I know. <laughs> let go. It's a, it's been a learning process, but I, I'll, I'll watch golf now, like with a different perspective, you know? Cause like before Correct. I started playing golf and I'd watch, I'm like, I expect everyone to make it, you know? I'm like, I'm like, how did he miss that putt? I'm like, he's not on the green? Or I'm like, how did that end up in the woods? And then I'm out there doing it myself. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. Like, <laughs> these guys you, are machines. How do you keep it out of the woods? Exactly. How do you keep it out of the woods? Yeah, it's, it's so much respect for y'all. And that's uh, and it's it's fun to watch golf. Like, there, there was a bunch of tournaments during quarantine that I was watching, uh, you know, with um, Charles Barkley, Steph Curry, like, all those guys. And that's a newfound respect for them because, like, again, seeing how – difficult and challenging golf is and seeing guys like that at the top of their game uh, and, and women at the top of their game I uh I, you mentioned Wake Forest um I uh had the privilege of being there with a with a handful of 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 incredible golfers Cheyenne Woods was one of them and she uh has made a, a name and career for herself um and it was it was just fun to be a part of that culture and um you know, I'll, I'll reach out to people like that for tips on my game. You know, I'm just like, I couldn't have a worse swing. I'm like, yo, can you coach me up on like what's going on? They're like, I don't even know where to begin, Matt. They're like, start from scratch. So that's awesome. You're learning though. It's uh, obviously it's a great game. I mean, like down the road, you want to like get your kids to do that. I mean, it's just it's vital and obviously business. I think I think it's a great place to just hang out. To be honest, I agree. I agree. I, um, I, I wish I would have picked it up sooner, but, um, I can't complain where I'm at now just because all my, all my buddies are picking it up, you know, uh, they've all started to, uh, I, I guess the fa- I guess that phase of, of where my friends are at in life right now is just, they're looking for ways to have fun outside of going to the bars and partying. And, um, and it, and it can turn into that on the golf course, which is fun. You know, it's, a, Man, it's a you're market. learning all the tricks of the trade, like <laughs> off immediately. So I, you get it. <laughs> In, enjoy i mean you think golf is hard you know sober but good luck <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah and harold i big... say the opposite hey, correct i'm not I, my I... lowest round ever was far from sober so i mean there's it's a push of, everyone has their own threshold correct what's your best game mine is, is that... uh like sober not sober i i just i don't even keep score from yeah i just I, i'm not very good Let's just put the it. only way I could take Harold is if we're both drinking. <laughs> yeah, you got to get him lit up. That's yeah. the only chance I have. Get him cross-eyed, and then then we'll see who's uh, who can go. I got to him play. today. <laughs> how, do, how do y'all feel about how do y'all feel about like a Top Golf or uh, like a Drive Shack? Like, will y'all go to those, or is that like doesn't do it for you? I the right crew, it's Top Golf's fun for me, but once in a while, what's it like for you, Harold? No, nah, it's not my thing. I mean, <laughs> you know, I, I actually went the day I got. It was a good. It's good to go with good people, but I, I, the last two times I've been to Top Golf, I didn't hit a golf ball. Like oh, my goal okay. is to try to when I go is to try to hit it over the fence, like left or right, because obviously I'm not, I don't hit it far enough to hit it over. Yeah. You know, the actual yeah. back of the fence. I just try to hit it left or right as hard as I can over it and hope it doesn't go in the parking lot. It's the <laughs> one in charge right next to a parking lot, so I just. <laughs> I don't know. Just not, not my thing. But I think it's a great way to get people in the golf, make it entertaining. Obviously, right. you know something. You know, like growing up, you're like, bro, I ain't playing no golf. It's pretty boring. So like, if you're in that stage, it's a great way to do that. But like, nah, 
No. You know what, though? That's, you just brought up a good point because I think people say that golf's boring who haven't gone out there and played golf. And I was one of those people. I'm like, yeah, that looks boring. Like, I don't want to do that. Yeah, and then when actually, a real sport. No, <laughs> golf is a real sport. And, and, I, and I stamp that the, the, the more and more my body's breaking down. I'm like, you know what? Like, I need to find other ways to compete. And golf is just like, I'm getting torn up by my, my, parent, my friend's parents. Like, there's not a, an age limit that discriminates against uh, anybody I played against. So, you know, whether they're old, young, man, female, like, I, I, I've been getting torn up. So um, it, that's promising for me, knowing that I'm only going to get older and I can keep working on my game. So, yeah, Matt, Tom is your friend. I, I, I got to ask you, I mean, speaking what? of competition and just a, a couple bachelor questions here, but yep. for any single guy watching that show, it seems – like an amazing opportunity where you're going on all these different dates and thrown into all these different situations. Describe what it's actually like when you're in the midst of it and you're <laughs> one guy across from that many females. Um, it can be overwhelming. You know, it's a lot. It's uh, you're, you're balancing a lot of different relationships. And um, for anybody listening who is in one relationship, like imagine trying to balance 20, 30 at one time. Uh, it's, it's, it's a lot of work. So, uh, that was probably the, the toughest part is just trying to be present with everybody because, um, you're having a bunch of conversations and interactions and, um, they can be as lighthearted as, uh, your favorite candy, your favorite color. And then someone can be telling you some really deep stuff about what they've been through and where they're at in life. So, um, you just gotta be mentally on all the time, which could be draining. So that's why I look for those outlets like skateboarding and playing golf while I'm there so that when I'm having these interactions with these women who have set their life on pause to pursue a relationship with me and, uh, me doing the same thing, I'm putting my best foot forward and I'm not just taking up space. You know what I mean? Yeah. That was a very articulate question. Like that was like or answer. Like I would have just been like, "Man, it's freaking awesome." But, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. You know what's funny though about that is that um, th that's what that's what being on the show forces you to do. You know, like you have interviews every single day. It's no secret. Like it, there's those there's that direct to camera where you're talking about the night. You're talking about a one on one. You're talking about a group date, and you know having not been on the show before, um, when they would ask me stuff, uh, I would just be like, you know, how are you feeling, Matt? I'm like, I feel great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> feel good. And then they're just like, 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 why do you feel great? And then they just, you just, they just force you to get to the, they don't force you, but like through their questioning, you get to the root of why you feel the way they do. And it just leads to better communication. And that's one of the biggest things I took away from that experience is just, being able to starting to be able to articulate how I feel uh, and not be passive aggressive because, you know, it's very easy uh, to be upset with somebody and just be like, you know, I'm good on that person. I'm not going to talk to them. And then as you're doing this, sh as you're in this experience, they're like, you, you, you start to think about why are you upset in this moment? It's like, well, I'm frustrated because of this. And then it's like the more that, you can do a better job of explaining to other people how you're feeling, then that's the, the, the framework for communication. Like perfect communication is when you can um, articulate what you're going through and the other person can articulate what they're going through. And uh, it's not one sided. It's not one person just projecting. It's, it's hearing something, internalizing it, and then being able to articulate how you're feeling without being angry, without being upset. Um, and, it wasn't easy, but uh, when you're out there for as long as, as you are and you have this many uh, interviews and and um, and interactions that over time it gets better. So that's a long winded answer for you, Harold. It's like I was horrible at it because oh. I was someone who was very short winded. You know, it's just like, oh, I'm all right. I'm straight. It's like I didn't there, I don't like to talk about myself. I don't like to talk because I like to listen and hear what other people have to say because people are interesting. Like people are way more interesting than I am. Like they've got crazy stories upbringings backgrounds so the more i listen i'm just like dang like i had no idea this person went through that um and that's that was another cool thing about being on the show is just like these women like they were incredible they've been through so much they sacrificed so much to be there and you're a good like, dude because i would just say they're crazy
I mean, they've been through something. I'm like, man, they're crazy. They're crazy. Uh, what are we doing here? You know, um, but, it, but Harold, I, aren't we both a little crazy? Man, I know I'm crazy. I just don't need to ask my <laughs> wife that because, you know, she, y'all, everyone might get the good end. No, George, that's a good point, bro. I think that everybody's crazy and it's just a matter, it's just levels to it, you know? And Correct. it's like, what's gotten you to that point? Because, like, I think every boyfriend is like, yo, my girlfriend's crazy. It's like, yo, we've made them that way because yeah, 100% you do? there's a cause and an action. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's when you're with your boys. You're like, hey, man, my wife's blah, blah, blah. Like, oh, what'd you do? Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yo, wife's tripping. Like, why? It's like, well, I talk to her all day. It's like, what? Like, <laughs> why not? Uh, yeah, it's it's a bunch of just like trying to be as self aware as possible so that you understand why people are interacting with you and responding to you the way that they are. Um, and the more self aware I was and am, I just think it leads to better communication. And communication is something that. I've struggled with as long as I can remember um, because I just have this thing where I think people can read my mind and they know what I'm thinking without having to say it. And um, <clears throat> that's obviously not the case and never will or has been the case. Um, so it's just, uh, um, it was a time to not even fully, but start to find ways to um, articulate feelings emotions uh so that these women um can get a, a full glimpse of who i am and um just make it an enjoyable uh experience for them and not again feel like they wasted their time and i'm not the person who they thought i was so that's the hard part for me is just how y'all just keep people you know like because you know like you know when you meet somebody you're like this this just ain't it <laughs> then you're like sitting there, you're like, maybe it is. And then if you hang around someone long enough, you you might just like them. But like, bro, you know, that, that. you're spot on because Ooh. the more time you spend with somebody, that's how feelings and, and emotions get there. Like, that's how they get Bachelor in Paradise. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, that too much time. Sorry, that was too easy. I had to. <laughs> I, I really do love the show. The reason I did not watch this year is because of you. So, you know, they lost. I apologize, man. <laughs> it's all good. I'll just watch the next one. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, Sorry. I'm curious, and I know, I, I mean, we, this could be like a three-hour Bachelor conversation, so we won't go deep down that wormhole. We'll hit you with some golf questions as we wind this down. Uh, I, I know there's a lot of things that unfolded as the season was ending and and afterwards. Uh, just curious if you've chatted with Chris Harrison at all subsequently. I know you guys were like friendly on a, a personal level as the show uh, was going on. Obviously, he removed himself from kind of the franchise going forward. Yeah, Chris was someone who I was playing a lot of golf with out there. Um, I got to, to know Chris really well. I spent a lot of time with him on the show. And after everything took place, uh, he reached out to me and apologized. And I think that was the case for a lot of people that um, he felt like he offended and we had a great conversation and uh, it sounds like he's taken all the necessary steps that he needs to take to, um, to, to learn. And I'm excited to see that for him. Man, I, I got to ask this. This is doing my head in. At some point, did you not think like, Hey, maybe I don't get it. Like, like, you know, like do you, just because people were like, could we not have, you were talking about communication. This the whole thing's about communication, asking questions. Why couldn't there have been some type of communication or questions or like how we can talk through that, be an example to the world we're in in this society to be like, hey, we're, you know, we're in this together. If it offends you, we can talk about it. We can, you know, because I'm not going to do that to my wife. Like if she offends me, well, that's a totally different story. I'm not good. You know, that's my. <laughs> You'll get yourself in trouble. Yeah, exactly. But I, I just think. I, I didn't watch it, but like my, I was, my wife is like, tell me about it. And I'm like trying, and I'm just like, I'm like, man, we, we need to be examples to, to ways to get through this. Not just be like, Hey, you're cut off. I, you know what I'm saying? And that, that's what I struggle. I struggle with that and everything in life, but you know, in the back of your mind, I'm just wondering like some point, could you, you know, cause like, especially since y'all get to spend time together, not in front of the camera and you're like, and that people play favorites. Like if that's my boy, I'm gonna be like, damn Chris you know like, what's up you know yeah yeah I think the best thing that that anybody could do is just continue to educate themselves and um 
be as inclusive as possible because the more uh, diverse your your friend group is and uh, your coworkers or the people that you surround yourself with, the, I think the the clearer it is that you understand uh, things that uh, aren't might not be implied. Uh, and that's something that I'm so fortunate about my upbringing. Like um, my skate crew uh, consisted of um, a Hispanic whose family was from uh, Peru and Venezuela, uh, a Jewish uh, a, a Jewish kid, Elliot Gorberg, who was one of my best friends and lived down the street. J.P. Cochran, who was uh, couldn't be more country from Little Washington, North Carolina, know and exactly uh, where it is. you know exactly where that is, and just like exactly that, like I, I went to bar mitzvahs, I <clears throat> um, I went to quinceañeras, like I did a lot of these different things based on just off the strength of how diverse my friend group was, and I learned a lot of things that I think uh, helped me in my older age that uh, people who grew up in areas where everyone looked the same might. Um, have an, a harder time understanding as they, they might not have uh, had that same life experience as I had. So that's something I'm going to try to do for my kids is just make sure, uh, and just my friend group is try to make sure that uh, there's a uh, there's representation. And uh, I think we saw a lot of that last year as, as our country demanded it. And uh, I think that we're at a time now that uh, as people continue to ask for it, we're seeing uh, – steps taken in the right direction and that's really all you can hope for yeah but I, it's also a slap in the face to some black people to say you're not capable like like i don't like i can work my ass off like i'm an american like everyone else like I, you know i think there's certain cases where like that stuff may happen but you know at the same time you gotta look yourself in the mirror like hey you know it's very similar to sports you know like if you want something you know you kind of can go get it you know it's not like someone's like got our hands back here and we're like Hey man, I can't get it because my hands. Right. No, come on, man. I I think that's a that's a cop out as a human in general. But as a black person to sit here and tell me that I'm not capable of having that job, I'm more. I am beyond capable because I'm here because of what's happened in the past. You know, like I, I think we should we should give ourselves a little. You know, you know, we can sit here and say like, hey, we, you know, we this is going to change. This is going to change. Sometimes, you know, the change that it's got to come from that person. And, you know, like as a black person, I think it's pretty cool. I can talk to you about being black, but we can also talk about how we can be better as humans, you know, and that's why you started the, you know, your foundation, the ABC thing, like, which I can't wait to talk about. Like that, that's, that's, no one held you back from doing that. No one, they didn't say, they were like, Oh man, me and my boy Tyler, we're going to do this, you know, and that, and that's, that's got to be shown in America that we, we can do this. Like, you know, like, just because some situations are different doesn't mean that that's the majority of what's happening. And that's where I like, I struggle. I struggle as a human because I see, I see you guys as like, Hey, Matt, well, how you doing, bud? You good? What, what can I do? Like all love George, how you doing? And I, I, I want to see more of that. I, uh, I don't know everything, but I'm just very, I'm a big advocate of like things that happen with George Ford are totally different than you not getting a job. Hey man, when it comes down to getting a job, man, it's who, you know, man, it's, it's like, it's just the way it is. I can't really explain it, but that doesn't mean you can't go get it. And uh, I just had to get that off my chest. That's like, that's, that means the world to me to know that like we do live in a place where we can, cause we could be in Africa. We could be somewhere where we can't. And I, I'm very proud of that. I know you're from the South and I know some people look, look differently upon the South. Like, Oh, you raised in the South is different. They don't No, man. The South is very, it's, it's quite opposite of what people perceive the South to be. Like I have black friends, I have white friends. I didn't choose those friends in the South. People long time ago had to, you know, release slaves and be together. And I, I think I'm proud of that. Um, so that I get where you're coming from with that, but I think, you know, you know, it's time for not only black people to look to white people to listen but it's also good for black people to listen as well because not every black person's had that journey of uh, someone having problems you know yeah i think a lot of of uh of why one of, i think a big reason of why uh where the frustration comes from is um uh just not having that benefit of the doubt you know without a doubt i agree yeah. and not every situation is that i i think we i think we're doing a really good job of looking at that that one percent you know, like that one percent is is blasted on media. It's like this, this, this. Like, hey, let's let's figure out that one percent and, and approach that one percent the right way. 
like you said, communication. Hey, who's in that 1%? Can I help them? Like, who's that 1% in my community in Charlotte? Who's that 1% wherever we are? And I, you know, after looking at your foundation, I think that's that you're targeting the 1% that can show, hey, I can do this. Yeah, that's a lot of that's a lot of the reason why we work with those kids, because yeah. uh, I feel like I was one of those kids who didn't grow up with um, a lot of the resources that I needed to be uh, successful. And uh, I was a product of people taking a special interest in me. And uh, I feel like Tyler was the same way. And knowing that we we are where we're at off the strength of women and men in our communities taking an interest in our success and our upbringing and uh, providing those experiences for us, whether that be uh, culinary, whether that be from sports, education, vacation, they've, the simple things that we take for granted, like eating out, going on a vacation, um, yeah, wasn't happening back then. being, yeah. being exposed to things that uh, a lot of us take for granted are the things that we try to provide for our students so that they can speak to these experiences and they can aspire to be in positions to do those things for their families. And wow. uh, it's, it's a baby step because there's a lot that we want to do. Uh, we want to do more programming around financial literacy. We want to do more programming around bringing things to the forefront of these communities that educate not only the students, but their families. And uh, we've, we've just scratched the surface with it. And we're working uh, with a hydroponic farming company, Let Us Grow, right now to put um, hydroponic farm stands in these these underserved communities so that uh, we can teach them about what it means to properly fuel your body and uh, what what it means to to have an option to eat healthy. You know, I think a lot of students that we work with don't eat healthy because they don't have access. Um, Without a doubt. We've all been to McDonald's, we've been to Burger King, but we've also been to nice steak houses and we've been to nice seafood restaurants. And those would probably be on the top half of our favorite restaurants, not because Burger King or McDonald's is horrible, it might be for some people, but because of the things that we've experienced are so much better. And that's the approach that we take. It's like these kids, for all they know, are living their best lives and they are but we want to expose them to everything. So they have that choice to make a decision to be like, you know what? I think I want more for myself. I want to do this. I want to do that. And just because my parent wasn't in that position doesn't mean that I can't obtain that myself. But that, and, that's the missing piece. You're, awesome. you're more than capable. And it's pretty cool that you're bridging that gap. I hear it all the time. George, you're living in Miami these days. You got to have some late nights and you wake up. You're not feeling too hot. Not true. And I'll tell you why. Tempo. Total game changer. Tempo supplements guarantee you're never going to miss a beat thanks to a formulation of natural ingredients and essential nutrients. Two versions of Tempo, Hungover AF, which I've taken, natural hangover supplement, and <laughs> coffee, a supplement for clarity and focus. Check out both at tritempo.co. That's tritempo.co. Find your rhythm with Tempo. Use promo code TEMPO for 15% off your order. Big thank you to Matt James for hopping on. Kind of an abrupt end there, H. Uh, we had said 30 minutes. It spilled to like 40. You could tell Matt outside. I <laughs> didn't think it would go that long. His phone actually died. By the time he got some juice in it, uh, it, it was way later. So uh, the interview kind of cut off a little quick. But we want to thank Matt for hopping on. And what kind of stood out to you from the conversation? Uh, the biggest thing was just I thought I thought his foundation was really cool. I think it's a very thoughtful thing. and. I think it's pretty cool that he used his platform to, uh, you know, better the lives of individuals. And that's sort of what we're here for to serve others. And I think he's doing a great job of that. Yeah. I, I thought it's pretty amazing that that's what he's putting a lot of his energy and effort into uh, now and the, the lives he's touching through that foundation on the golf standpoint. Can't believe he went through that many balls. How do you yeah. lose? What was it? 34, 36 or 24 balls. Yeah, something crazy like that. It's just, it's a lot of golf balls. I mean, I hope he's making a good bit of money, you know, to be in the bachelor because uh, those things aren't cheap. In, in the conversation, we don't have to get fully deep in the weeds with, with you and Matt. Um, was it, I, I guess, did it open your mind at all? Or what, when you guys were discussing what happened on the bachelor, um, was it interesting at all to kind of hear the, the differing opinions or where the conversation led? Yeah, I don't, I don't think we had different opinions. I just think I'm way more candid about what I think is, uh, 
you know, what I believe in. And I think I'm learning how to articulate that. I think, you know, I think that's what happened. And there's ways to go to work together and do these things. And I just think with the biggest, with Bachelor being the platform, I just think there's a better way of going about helping someone listen, supposedly. So I just, I've always been candid about that. Um, I think we all should listen and it's just the way it is. You know, like we don't have to agree to talk. I just think we all have to agree to listen. Completely, uh, completely echo your sentiments uh, and well said. So now the focus to your biggest one or two events uh, out of the year. First time you went to the Wells Fargo, what age were you as a fan? Uh, I had to be 12, I think, 11, 12. Um, yeah, it was just, I mean, it's the biggest thing in our city. I feel like once a year and being a golfer, it's just, it's by far the biggest thing. You want to see the best players in the world play. And yeah, the obviously my greatest memory is Tiger not signing my hat. Uh, still pissed about that, but it is what it is. And um, So you set your expectations too high. You went for Tiger. The first golf tournament I went to, 97 Western Open. Tiger won that week. Uh, Tuesday practice round with my junior golf clinic. And there was a mob of like 100 kids around Tiger. So I instead went to get caddy autographs. So I got fluffs autograph. I had a ball because I just started caddying that summer. So I was like, yes, everyone's going to go for Tiger. So I got like fluff and like 12 or 13 other caddies smushed on this golf ball in my hat probably the only one of the only times most of these guys have ever been asked for an autograph they're no giving me the side eye like is this kid confused thinking that we're actually players but i wonder if they remember but uh no it's uh i i didn't know who else to get i couldn't tell you who was caddying for who then of course well. you gotta go for i for, just knew for tiger wanted, yeah and i was in a good spot and just didn't work out my way but what did he say again i what was the story well he uh well he didn't say anything he just signed the person this little girl's right next to me and just kept walking and i just remember telling him like when we played together and he just started laughing you know i was just like what a wanker <laughs> that was so when tiger was laughing what did he get any jabbing or what did he say when like he hadn't signed your autograph and you were 12 or however long ago that was uh, well, we laughed because I felt like he gave me way more than an autograph. So we just kind of, you know, like, uh, you know, you know, those awkward moments when you're speaking to people that, you know, you look up to like, ah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, favorite memory from going to Wells Fargo as a fan. Um, not many. I, I mean, none that I'd want to share on here, but I've had, had some good time. It's a podcast. Good... What, you got some X-rated stories that happened to Wells Fargo? Or what, no. you took a few back and got vocal? No, not vocal. Just too much. Too soon. Yeah, it was a <laughs> it was a great place for us to hang out as kids. Um, get to see some awesome golf. But um, spent some time there with some awesome people. Uh, I just, every time I play in every tournament, I just hope that every person had as much fun as I did, you know what I mean? So take us through a week in the life of HV3 this week at the Wells Fargo, starting with Tuesday and going forward, what you're doing on and off the course. So we have a mandatory players meeting at 4.30. What a great week. I think they do this on purpose. So we have that uh, practice round. It'll be a regular week, um, but there'll be a lot more cheers, a lot more people talking. Um, and I'll have a hard time not talking to him, but it is what it is. Uh, and then I think I'm playing with Ron this week, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, that'll be a lot of fun. Uh, cat's out of the bag? Yeah, it's out. It's out. Uh, I'm so pumped. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it, but I just want to be ready for Thursday. Like, let's go. How many tickets are you getting? How many people are going to be walking with you? Uh, we only get two this week, so it's been kind of like a – ask how many players I can get their tickets. So it's just, it's been tough, but it, it is what it is. You know, you just, I, I, in the past, it might help me actually just based off of uh, COVID, you know, I, I can say no, you know, usually. Yeah. Years past, um, you probably had to get what, a hundred or 200 or something like that. Quite a few. I would go up, but. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, the Wells Fargo has been great helping out, like just getting me what I needed. And 
maybe I take advantage of it, but maybe they help me out. So it's uh, it's awesome. I mean, it's pretty. It's an easy week, but it's uh, it seems bigger than what it is just based off of you know what I think about it, what this place means to me, and what other people want and need. So, uh, what's been your best finish there? Um, I don't even know. That's good. Uh, one year I think I finished like in the twenties. I don't know, nothing great. But now that you're a quail member, is that helping? I don't think it's going to hurt. You still got to play well. For sure. Sorry, that was terrible. <laughs> I mean, I, I was like, I don't, I don't oh, know. you still got to play well. Thanks, Harold. <laughs> what is I don't know. Yeah. I Thank mean, God I don't our know. listeners waited let, no, I've listen been a an member hour into the podcast freaking... to hear you say, oh, yes, I'm a member of quail and I still have to play well. Yeah, but I've only been a member. I mean, I've probably played there eight times since I've been a member. It's not like I've been a member for like two years, you know, like, yeah. but it can't hurt. I think seeing the golf course. Um, Is Webb giving you any input or any of the other? I've only guys? seen Webb out there one time at the same time. So I don't know. I don't really, act, I mean, I want to just practice with him. I want to see how he works, see how he works. I mean, having five kids, you know, and still being – at the top of his game like that, that's the stuff I want to see. Would you play a practice? Do you ever play practice rounds with Webb? No, I've yet to play a practice round with Webb. No, I think about it. no. Yeah, would I? Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, I would think so. Not not I mean, only just for this week, but I mean, the guy's got a rock he's solid really golf good. Game. Yeah, exactly. I mean, any th- any chance I can get to learn something from one of the best players in the world, sign me up. Can you let? I mean, do you daydream at all about like what if with this week, if, if everything goes right? I think I do not? that every week and then you tee it up and you're like, there is no what if. Do your job. You're here to do, you got one job and that's to play good golf and get in the zone that you think you need to be in and give yourself the best chance to win. And I think that's worked pretty well for me. So I just need to keep doing that. And eventually I'm going to break right through. For you to get in that zone, what happens? Just keep having fun, man. Golf's hard. Life's hard. Playing golf's fun, you know. If you look at it as life or death, you're not going to do great at it. I mean, some people do, but I just I'm not going to excel doing that. Yeah, you got to be you. I mean, not yeah. not everyone can have the same mentality on the course. Correct. Uh, finally, any prediction for the week or what? For people listening, what should they be watching for when you're in TV coverage? Watch me play well. Watch yeah. me go to work. And the way it works right now, where I am, if you play well, I'll get on TV. I don't get on TV for – you know, I'm not that not that, that echelon yet of golf, but all in time, I just, I just want to have a chance. You know, I just can't overthink it. Do your job and see where the chips fall. I think it's so easy to just get there and be like, this is what I'm going to do here. No, you're going to play golf. You're going to figure it out. Yeah, I, I think the good part with my job is regardless, they have to put me on TV. So, yeah, exactly. So, if I go exactly. ahead and shit the bed, they're not putting me on TV. So that's <laughs> uh, well, yeah, it's uh, it. I always enjoy seeing a guy go back to their hometown and play, and I know how much this week means to you. So it'll be fun once you put the peg in the ground um, to see yeah, what you're capable of for uh, the Wells Fargo, man. Good luck. Let's go get it, baby.